President Mueller asked me to step into the provost role. Well, basically, a provost, um, but my job is to work with our uh, deans and be a servant leader to them. The worst part about my job is I'm a layer step away, removed from you all. I, I so miss having students right outside my door when I was working in the Clendon College of business. Uh, but now my job is to support Bree, to support the dean of business, the dean of engineering and tech, the dean of education. Uh, so in the academic affairs model, everything that's teaching and learning, curriculum, faculty, accreditation, student support, office of the registrar, that all falls under uh, academic affairs in my area of response, my AOR, if you will. All right, so we are all here to earn our degree and to prepare for our future. So Dr. Duke here is responsible for supporting all of our academic deans, the academic infrastructure of the institution so that you can achieve just that. So if we didn't pick up, he's kind of a big deal. All right, one of GCU's primary pillars is servant leadership, and there's no one on this campus who exemplifies that more than Dr. Gidd. A lot of it comes from his deeply rooted Christian faith, um, but also his experience prior to coming to GCU. Uh, you spent a lot of time in the Air Force. He flies jets. Can you tell us about your time before GCU? Uh, feels like another life ago. Uh, yeah, so I served the country uh, through 26 years. Um, my wife put up with me, we moved 12 times. Uh, we, our youngest daughter is actually in K through 12 in one school district, so that's, that's fun. But I get to uh, fly all over the world, see a lot of places, meet a lot of people, and uh, there's just, right now as we sit here, uh, there's people serving in every imaginable part of the country. And, uh, and you all can serve in your own way, and everybody does. And uh, I, I love my family because they supported that effort as well. Uh, my wife, you know, I'd start, I'd learn a new airplane, learn a new mission, immediately had camaraderie and friends, and then she had to start all over and get our family settled. She's, you know, the CEO of our house. And she uh, had to get, you know, find out schools and friends and networking. So yeah, I know anybody, I'm sure we have people here who grew up in the military with, uh, with their family. And I know you moved around and it was really hard starting over, but you learned a lot from it and you're probably a little more outgoing because of it. I had the opportunity to uh, teach at the Air Force Academy. And I'm telling you, the students there were phenomenal, but the students here at GCU in my 10 years have a heart to serve. And the number of faith-oriented service projects that you do that we probably don't even know about, uh, collecting food and clothing during the week and then going on the weekends and serving and helping uh, all areas of town and campus. And you don't just do church on a Sunday, you do church every day. So I thank you for that and I so respect how you live out your faith. All right, so Dr. Gibb, every single semester, we host commencement right here in the GC arena. Dr. Gibb is the one who confers his degree and awards that as you cross the stage. And in every commencement, you applaud our faculty for being the most dedicated and committed faculty in the nation. What makes you so proud of our faculty? What are you most excited about when our faculty get to work with these students? Right. Uh... We just have an amazing team because they're not here for their own research. They're not here, they're here to pour into you. And again, this is what I shared the last couple days at the orientation. Um, I'm standing here, I don't want to get cold for three seconds in the paint. Uh, we take basketball seriously. Uh, so, so many faculty, like I shared, they all teach four classes a semester, and we have a number of research design projects, RDPs. We have something called Emerging Scholars. Uh, I just ran into Zach Ziegler. He has the Power Lab. He does health and fitness oriented research and studies. And he has so many students that work with him in the lab who do the research. They go to conferences, they present, they publish in our new Journal of Undergrad Research. Um, in other publications and presentations. 
And he's there for them. He's the facilitator. He's the proud parent in the background as you all are doing the work. And we just have so many faculty that are like that. Uh, anybody in here have a business idea? Want to do a startup? Have a startup. Okay. Awesome. Anybody over here? Startup? Well, we have an amazing ecosystem to support and promote and encourage and facilitate and to teach. How do you take your idea into concept? How do you take your idea into revenue generating? Um, I think social entrepreneurship is a funny phrase. Every entrepreneurial effort is a social impact because you create and capture value by, by pri providing a good or service that someone's willing to pay you for. And if you can scale it, you're solving the world's problems uh, and meeting the needs of others that they're willing to pay you to do. And then you can reinvest that surplus or abundance or profit, whatever word you want to use, you can reinvest that into your product, into your people, into your passion, into whatever, maybe you have a nonprofit you want to support. Well, somebody has to generate revenue, have an abundance, and then give to that nonprofit. So we have faculty that will help you in every imaginable way to do that. Um, and that's what I'm just so proud of. Uh, that, that I could go on and on with faculty names, Tim Kelly, Robert Berry, Paul Waterman, I already mentioned Zach. Uh, Matt Nolan, who just presented last week to our faculty about civil discourse. And how do we have conversations in the classroom? How do we talk about important issues we need to talk about uh, during these uh, days, the next you know, 60 days till the election? Uh, how do we talk about everything? We do it respectfully, with dignity, uh, with intention, with love and care as we're talking with one another. Uh, Matt Nolan and Michelle, are phenomenal. Michelle, they're both in chess in the, in the communication department. So, just so proud of our team. I'll stop talking. All right, we'll wrap up with this final question. You have nearly 900 of the best and brightest here in the room. They are getting ready to start their academic journey here in the Honors College. What is your final word of advice for them as they get ready to start class next week? Again, what, what you heard President Mueller share and what I said was start now and I meant that. You all, in my eight years in College of Business, our leaders came from this group right here, from TEDx to Idea Club to Canyon Angels. Um, the, the work that you do, so you all, I, I can't say enough. You, you're going to be focused on your grades because you're high-performing, high-achieving students. But I just want to encourage you to get involved. Because more important than a 4.0 on a transcript is is leadership and I know none of you are here to participate you're here to lead and that's what we want to encourage you to do and it's it's uh, when I shared Kennedy's uh, what she has done uh, the other day at the orientation you know her resume in college is so impressive and I know you all have just as impressive if not more impressive resumes so look around if you're not going to marry her, you're going to compete against the people sitting next to you and People are hustling. You're going to hustle, right? Uh, I love this story of uh, Greg Jenkins. He was mowing the lawns at the Cincinnati Reds training, spring training facility here in Phoenix because he wanted a job in sports business and to get his foot in the door with Major League Baseball. So as a freshman, he's doing landscaping for the spring training facility. So that's the kind of students that we have that that's hustle, that's motivation. So I'm, I'm super excited, I want to get to know you, I want to meet you, and I know you're going to be the leaders on this campus, uh, you know, if not by next week, definitely uh, this coming semester and beyond. Thank you so much. Let's give it up one more time for Dr. Gay Octobos. All right, so next I want to introduce you to two other individuals who play a huge role in your experience here in the Honors College. So we have the Leadership in Action Fellowship, and within this fellowship we have our Student Council. And so this year I'd like to introduce you to our President and Executive Vice President leading this council for you all here today. They are current Honors students. Let's start with some introductions. Kirtana, tell us more about you. Of course. My name is Kirtana, and I'm a senior majoring in animation with a minor in programming. I'm originally from India, moved to the U.S. in 2016, and I've been here in Arizona for the past 
four years, and I'm going to be the president of Leadership in Action Fellowship this upcoming year. All right, welcome, Kirtana. Issa Joy, tell us more about you. Hi, everybody. My name is Issa Joy. I'll be serving alongside Kirtana as the vice president of Leadership in Action Fellowship. I'm a first-generation student and a senior here at GCU studying biology with an emphasis in pre-dentistry with a minor in business. I'm originally from Southern California from a big family of 11, and I've been at Phoenix for around two years now. All right, let's give it up for our student leaders in the Fellowship in 2020. All right, so we have seniors here. They are battle-tested, proof that there is a survival right here, right? And they make it to the finish line here. So they've accomplished quite a few things. Kirtana, Lisa Joy, do you guys remember your honors orientation sitting in these seats? Let's reminisce a little bit. What was that like? Finally, you should ask Dr. Bree because I was actually late to my honors orientation. When I walked through the doors of Books Performance Center, all the program materials were gone and the program had begun. And I'm just sitting in the back and really, really nervous. And I didn't even actually have a seat. I was standing in the back and so nervous for what the day would bring and what I was going to do. And I was all alone. And it's just ah, lots of depressing things. Uh, there was also the elective sessions that were happening in the afternoons. And I didn't really make any meaningful connections. And so I just left the day early, really feeling dejected. But then I took a shot into honors in my second year with the Young Athena Valley of the Sun Leadership Program. And I just absolutely fell in love with honors. It, it was my community, it was my people, and I just kept going. All right, so you too can be late to orientation and be president one day. So there is a rebound offer on the table. Issa Joy, tell me about your orientation experience. Yeah, my orientation was a little bit different. I feel like as many of you guys here today, it is, we are packed in this GC arena. That line was crazy outside. So I was more surprised about how many students are actually participating in the Honors College compared to our high school programs and Honors programs there. Um, as much as very intimidating to see how many students are here, it's very comforting to know that so many of us are gonna be going through the same college experience through the Honors College. All right, so tell me a little bit. You waited until second year to get really involved here tonight. You started with the Young Athena program. What are some of the things you've done since that have led you into this presidency role for our student council? Yes. After my Young Athena program, I learned a lot about myself and grew in leadership. And then I felt ready to tackle some student leader roles. And so last year, Leadership in Action Fellowship was actually divided into two entities. There was Leadership in Action Clubs and then RISE Fellowship, which is the student body government side. And I got a student leader position in the Leadership in Action Club side, and I was also a member in RISE Fellowship under Issa Joyce Task Force, actually. So got to experience her leadership and her wisdom. And just being involved in both of these roles, I learned a lot and grew a lot more. And when applications opened up to be president and vice president for Leadership in Action Fellowship, I felt ready to jump in, and I was felt ready to step up to that responsibility. And so I applied, interviewed, and I'm here today in front of you all. So Kirthana, as a digital design major, she's led global health initiatives, she's led major event planning, she's part of a leadership conference. So in the Honors College, one thing that is so important to remember, we include majors, we have over 200 different undergraduate degree programs represented at the Honors College. So it is about innovation through collaboration. It's not just about participation, it is about leading. So we strongly encourage you, if you see something and you're like, oh, that, I don't know if that makes sense for me as a digital design student or as a nursing student, show up because you never know where the collaborative piece is going to come into play. You don't know who you're going to meet, how you're going to grow, and how it's going to shape the next few years of your undergraduate experience. So here is an incredible example for those reasons. Peace and joy, we have a lot of events. We're not all about... The, the academic piece and the leadership and professional development. We have fun on occasion, right? So what are some of your favorite events to attend? Where can these students find community in the Honors College? Yeah, great question. So one of my favorite events, my time here in the Honors College is actually our Honors College Backyard Barbecue, which is coming up very soon for you guys on September 16th. So be sure to check that out. It's one of our earlier events. It's an easy way to get plugged in, see your fellow Honors students, see that community that you're gonna be here for the next three, four years. In addition to that event, in our spring semester, we actually have our Next Generation Leadership Conference, which is a really amazing networking opportunity for many of our honors students to just get involved, see speakers from all around the valley coming in, 
going to your breakout sessions, and of course there's free food at all these events, so who what college student doesn't want that? And then lastly, our honors banquet. We like to recognize our stellar students here in the honors college, those who are going above and beyond in our honors programs on and off campus, so just recognizing students and seeing what your fellow honors students are up to is a really amazing time. All right, so bottom line, if there's anything else you learn in college, it is where to save the dining dollars and find the free food. There's free food at these events, all right? We're feeding it up for today's event, too. So good tip, good piece of advice. All right, let's wrap it up with this. What is your final piece of advice for these new incoming students as they get ready to kick off the new year? My advice for you guys, similar to Dr. Randy Gibb, is to be courageous. Try something new. Get con like be committed to some program that you were interested in and just try it out. Be courageous and see how it goes and you might never know what you find, what you might like, and what you learn. So. Alright, so get comfortable being uncomfortable. Is that the gist of it? Yes. Let's get off work. Alright, use the joy. And my advice to you all, on a practical note, we're all honor students, type A type of people, so put everything in Google Calendar. <laughs> that is my advice. Um, be good with time management. On a more realistic note, don't feel to, the need to overcompensate yourself. Yes, strive for good grades, get that academic excellence, get involved early, sign up for extracurriculars, but realize that when you're still a student, take care of yourself, take care of your heart. Everything in life requires balance. So that is my advice to you. All right, thank you so much. Let's give it up one more time for Chris and orientation so we are all here to seek our honors diploma so let's talk a little bit about what that entails so first and foremost our students complete 28 credits of honors coursework now this is not in addition to the credits required to earn your bachelor's degree it is built into your program of study so it is nothing extra we take courses you are required to take anyways and offer them in an honors format we offer over 290 different honors course options to choose from. We want you to feel excited and comfortable about the honors courses that are on your schedule. So if you have something on there and you want to look at alternative options, please take a look at our honors course catalog. We do have honors designated student services counselors, which are highly trained individuals to help assist you in mapping out your path to graduation. Please know we have many of our students who transfer in a lot of credits and or desired early graduation timing. They want to be finished in two, two and a half, three years. That is absolutely possible, but we got to make some of those decisions early. So talk with your honors SSDs early and often. The next thing we're going to do is complete one HON prefixed course. Our most popular course is the Honor Symposium. It's a zero credit seven week course that takes place either in the fall or spring semester. We'll talk a little bit more about this course in just a moment. The next thing we're going to do is maintain a 3.25 GCU GPA. We review that on an annual basis, so you have the full academic year to get that GPA as strong as you can. If for some reason you fall below a 3.25, please do not worry. We will not kick you out the door. We will not shame you down the walkway. We will work with you. There is an opportunity for you to stay in the Honors College. We work with you, provide you additional resources, because our goal is to see you succeed. We want to see you with the Honors Medallion. We want to see you with the Honors lapel pin. We want to see you succeed and cross the stage as an honors graduate. So we are here, we are your partner here in your academic journey. Now a few more pieces, your first year experience. These are some of the honors general education courses. So what's phenomenal about these opportunities is this is where you get the chance to meet other honor students from a bunch of different degree programs. So students are mixed in to these different general education courses. As you look at your student schedule, whether it's in your student portal or on your GCU student phone app, you will see these peppered throughout your first year. It is absolutely okay if this is planned for your second year. For some of you, that might be the case, and that is perfectly okay. But many of our students will see this somewhere between their first and second semester. You will see HUM 109HN. You should not see UNV 103. Um, so these are substitutions. We don't expect you to take both the non-honors and the honors version of these courses. You also have this information in your orientation program that you walked in with, so take a look at the details there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about your schedule, whether it's for this semester or a future semester, we will have our honors SSEs available at our elective sessions this afternoon in Tech 57. So you can handle all of your scheduling concerns, last minute edits, changes, without the schedule change fee in place. You can take care of that today before we jump into our three-day weekend. 
So going more to HON 110, what you should know about this course. This is for our first year honor students. We group students together by key discipline areas. We have all of our first year nursing students, first year psychology, first year business, etc. So as you enter this course in HALO and you start to look at the announcements, make sure you are enrolled in the appropriate section. So if you're a nursing student and you're seeing a lot of content about business and you're like, kind of not my thing, I want to see blood and I want cadavers, maybe we look for signs that we should find the nursing section. If this is your case, again, the honors SSDs will assist you today to make sure you get enrolled into the appropriate section, whether it's this fall or next spring. Here's the beautiful part about that course. Dr. Gibb was talking about getting involved. We don't just participate, we lead. In this course, you will be paired with one of our phenomenal hand-selected faculty from this area. They have experience in the field, both as a faculty, but in industry. They are going to talk to you about career preparation, what you need to do at GCU to set yourself up for success beyond your time at GCU. How do we find the internships? How do we prepare ourselves for medical school? What do we need to know about the 8,000 possible paths a psychology major can take, right? A lot of these questions, we don't want to wait until we are sitting here in the arena on commencement day to think about. We want to start thinking about it now. We have high achieving students here in the room. We want to set you up for success. If you plan to graduate early, we got to start moving on that runway now. So this course is designed to help give you the best competitive advantage with mapping out your plan for success. So again, HLN 110, you'll see that on either your fall or spring semester. Just make sure you are in the right cohort. All right, what we also want to do this warrants an applause. We don't require a thesis. No employer ever said, show me your 250 page thesis, I can't wait to read it cover to cover. Never, never. And to be honest, most aren't gonna be looking at your GPA either. What they want is a practical experience. They wanna see that you can get your head outside the classroom, you can take that theory, you can apply it, and that you have the experience applying that knowledge that you're learning in the classroom. So what we do in lieu of a thesis, we're not going to make you write a 200 word paper. What I want you to do is get the experience that matters. When you graduate from GC, when you are sitting here on commencement day, you need more than a diploma and a great GPA to put on the resume. One, we shouldn't be putting a GPA on a resume anyways, but if you're low on content, you might throw it in there. We need content, right? You only get that through experience. So what we do is we've provided an opportunity for you to earn honors course credit by interning, by traveling the world, um, by professional service learning, so volunteering in the communities that you would like to serve in the future. These are the courses I would take a picture of the screen. You can earn credit towards your diploma, earn honors credits towards your honors diploma, and get the experience that is needed for your resume through these opportunities. We're gonna triple dip. Great news, you can get paid during these internships too. So we call that the work, earn, learn model. Let's find you a job that's great experience. Let's get you paid for that job because now we're, we're starting to build up the savings and prepare ourselves for that transition out of college. Let's earn some college credit along the way because I'm trying to tackle that and earn my degree a little bit quicker. How does that sound? You guys kind of sound like you want the thesis. Do you want that? We can make that happen. Do you want the thesis or do you want to work? Let's make some money, okay. So take note of those courses. Again, this QR code is in your orientation brochure, but this links you to our entire honors course catalog. Again, over 290 different honors course options to choose from. Every single degree program on this campus will have an honors course option for you to choose within your program of study. But again, be smart. If you have electives and you want to earn internship credit, global studies credit, mission credit, please look at those opportunities because it's a great way to triple dip and maximize your time here on GCU's campus. All right, so now I am so excited to introduce that this year we are launching for the first time ever our Leadership in Action Institute. This is a new institute that is home to over 10 different leadership and professional development programs here at GCU, specifically in the Honors College, and drum roll please, they are all 100% free to you as Honors students. We are the only honors program in the state of Arizona that does not charge you to be an honors student. So not only did you not pay a program fee to be here, but these programs are offered to you with industry experts embedded into them at absolutely no charge to you. So absolutely take advantage of everything that this institute has to offer. Dr. Barrett is going to come up here and tell you a little bit more about these programs, but I need you to repeat after me real quick. Ready? It's the start that stops most people. 
start that stops us from The start is scary. Kirsten has said it. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. It is the start that stops most people. Sometimes you just have to say yes. Sometimes you just have to say, I have no idea what this program entails. I have no idea what it's going to do for me. I have no idea how it's going to help me in the future. But just say yes and show up. That is where networking starts. It's how relationships get built. That's how you learn things you never thought you needed to learn. All right, so when we talk about the Leadership in Action Institute, this is designed for you. This is shaping you for your future. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Merit Khan to the table. Our brand new Men of Valor program. 
So this is open to everyone, but it's primarily focused on helping men connect, build that community, and uh, focus on developing those great leadership skills. And we bring in our incredible professional advisory board members and their networks to really pour into you. So there's some incredible people behind that program. We also have our Young Athena program that both Kirtana and Issa Joy reference. And this is a great way to really explore some self-development topics so you can really step into your authenticity and the Next, I want to highlight our speaker series. So you've heard us talk a lot about making sure that you are ready for your career, right? You're here, you're here to earn a degree. We want to make sure we're helping you build those really critical skills to be successful after GCU. So one of the ways we do that is we bring in really incredible people from industry to campus so they can share their experiences with you. You can start building that network, ask really great questions, and start to get a peek into what your industry might look like. For any of you interested in the government space, we also have the Canyon Civic Institute. This is a great opportunity to uh, engage with government officials who actually bring them on campus for that public square series. You also have the opportunity to go off campus and visit some really incredible spaces. Uh, so if that's your wheelhouse, this is a great opportunity for you to get involved. All right, how many of you are thinking grad school? Like, I just got here, what is this? Okay, some of you are thinking about graduate school already. It is important to think about that now, so if that's the goal, we want to make sure we're setting you up for success here at GCU so we can help you get to that grad school path. A big part of that is going to be research. So how many of you, when I say the word research, picture, STEM, engineering, science, tech, yes, not that those are bad, of course. Those are going to have some really great research opportunities in our research and design program, or RDP, you might hear refer it as, but there are a lot of really other great ways to conduct research too, and a lot of this can really be done using the experiences you are going to have anyway. So if you're going to do some community engagement opportunities, you can do research and actually get published talking about those experiences. So that's under our Canyon Emerging Scholars program. So those are for your non-STEM programs if you're looking to do any kind of research. Uh, beyond that, you can actually go ahead and get published in our Canadian Journal of Undergraduate Research. I actually teach a class to help students prepare their manuscripts to get published. And you can also participate in some really great opportunities that are more academic conference style. So we have our Canadian Undergraduate Research Conference, and then we also have our Honor Showcase, which is a scholarship opportunity. So if anybody's interested in that, later on you can actually compete for scholarships by presenting in our Honor Showcase. All right, really what I want you to take away is to just get involved. Get involved, yes. We just want you to get involved. Try something on. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Go try something else. Get involved. You can absolutely customize your honors experience. There are so many different ways to get involved. There are going to be a lot of other people just as passionate as you about anything you're about, whether it's research, whether it's leadership, whatever it might be, there are a lot of other students passionate about it too, so it's a great way to build your community. So with that, I want you to remember, get involved in leadership. Get involved in leadership. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. We'll hand it over to a video and then Dr. Brie.
Uh, we are traveling places we have never traveled before. So if you want to join our honors peers and some of our best faculty on some of these short-term programs, it's a great way just to dip your toe in and try new places, try new cultures, learn about the region, absolutely sign up for these programs. We are also doing London. We have a business program going to London over spring break. So if you're trying to reserve your summer vacation for your time back home, please absolutely look at maximizing your spring break programming with us as we go to London for a business tour. We also do honors mission programs. So these, again, are exclusive to our honors students. Now, we have a phenomenal partnership with Well Child International. We traveled with them over the last several years. We continue to book out our programs with them. So these will fill fast. We do a medical mission trip to Baja, Mexico. We do that over spring break and during the summer. Uh, and it's not strictly a medical mission trip. We have now opened up site support into education, into working with kids in the community, working with families in the community. Uh, but if you are a student planning to pursue medical school, this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to experience healthcare in other regions of the world. Absolutely mark this one down. We do it every single year, spring break and summer, Well Child International, Baja. We also do a hike for humanity throughout Costa Rica. And I will be honest, this is not glamping. So I do not need this program, Anya does. Anya backpacks, we go into the most rural regions of Costa Rica. We go into regions where transportation, roadways does not exist. So the only service and support they get is when our teams go into those communities to serve and pour into those communities. Again, a healthcare focus, but there are other ways to engage and connect with individuals in these communities. So if you want a backpacking trip, we do Hyper Humanity. It's a 12-day program in Costa Rica. That is in the summer. Also, brand new, this year we have partnered with Passages, and they are doing a program to Washington, D.C. Anyone excited about Washington, D.C.? All right, well, we have a four-day program, a four-day program with Passages. It will take place January 2nd through the 5th. Um, so it'll be right before you return back to GCU for your spring semester. We have room for 200 students to join this program. Here's the best part. It is so well funded and supported by our partners with Passages that the cost for this four-day program, including airfare, most of your meals, a lot of the transportation, hotel, for four days in Washington, D.C., is $250. It will fill fast. So if you are interested in this program, that link is now live. It's not going to wait until October. It is open now, and there's 200 spots. So if you're interested, jump on that, jump on it fast. So again, short-term programs there. We also do traditional study abroad. So if you want to do a full semester, full academic year, or summer in one of our 80 different international locations, we will help you do that, regardless of what your major is, how many credits you have left, if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, we will help work study abroad into your program and, and show you what those options look like. Our most popular locations right now, we have Italy, we have Spain, we have all over London, we have Australia, but that is just to name a few. So if you're interested in study abroad, they are part of the Honors College Department. They are located in our same space, which is in the engineering building, building one. Um, go to office 220, which is our reception area, and we will direct you from there. Hey guys, my name is Shane. I am a junior studying finance with emphasis in financial planning. Uh, in addition to that, I was born and raised here in Arizona and went now working as a junior program development specialist for the Colombo College of Business. I will be helping plan events for the first year experience with my first year committee uh, and committee members.
Now, with that being said, if you guys see me around, whether it's walking around campus or even at, maybe if I'm at the LBC, don't be afraid to come say hi. Hi guys, my name is Emily. I'm a junior this year studying business administration and public accounting. I'm originally from southeastern Colorado and I'm the director of community and belonging this year. Our team is responsible for a lot of the events you see, backyard barbecue and honors thing, just as Issa said. Now, as we're wrapping things up, we have one last thing. If you guys could pull out your phones really quick, we're going to ask a few things of you. If you could go ahead and follow GCU Honors on Instagram, this is where you'll keep up to date with all those mission trips, as well as a bunch of the events that are going on. Secondly, if you could connect with the Honors Calls on LinkedIn, you just connect with them, as well as put honors student at GCU in your bio and put it in your education section so the honors program can keep up with you. Finally, if you could bookmark the GCUhonors.org page, this is where you find all of our signature programs and all of these opportunities that we have listed. Lastly guys, I would highly encourage you all to check out the Honors Lounge. Located in the elbow of the engineering building, you're going to find our Honors Lounge in room 230. Now this room, I used it a lot last year, I absolutely love it. Um, it's a wonderful place to study, or if you feel like it, you can go ahead and take a nap in there too. All right guys, our last fun thing is a giveaway. Is everyone excited for a giveaway? There we go. So there's five lucky students in this audience. If you pull out your brochures, there's a sticker in the top right hand corner. If you have that, please stand up. Okay, if you guys can meet me and Shane in the lobby at the conclusion of this, we'll give you a prize. Thank you guys. Thank you for that, for Dr. Alright, so before I wrap it up, you have to participate in this real quick for me. I need you to turn to your neighbor, tell them your absolute favorite, 100% all-time best moment from when you were 8 years old ago.
fill your plate, to see you know, what really feels like home, to see where you can find that community. And if at any point you're like, I just don't know where to start, find us in our office. We are in Engineering, Building 1, Room 220. Any one of our staff, any one of our students, stop anyone and say, here's what I'm passionate about, where do I start? You offer 20 different programs, 40 different events a month, where do I start? And we are happy to help you get connected and find the people that are gonna make you feel like you are right here at home. That is our goal, that is our hope for you guys. So here's what we have going on for the rest of the day. Uh, I told you we'd feed you, so there is pizza. Well, it's gonna be a little bit of a worse wall game, good luck finding it, but there's pizza that follows the summer. Once you exit this arena, I encourage you guys, take a hard right, you're gonna to go to the Tech Building 57. All right, we have elective sessions that will start at 12.15. We are running these four sessions three times back to back to back. So if you are looking and you said, okay, I got a lot of information, it's a little bit of an information overload, I see some stuff in my program, but I need more clarity, this is where we go into the next level of detail, we give a little more information, and we really start to work you through your how-to and the next steps for each of these pieces. So whether you're looking for community, you want to start mapping out your grad school, med school path, uh, you want to learn more about the global studies programs, you want to see the itineraries, learn more about the application process, what's the cost, how do I get involved, those are the things we cover in the elective sessions. So again, as you take your pizza, there are plenty of tables uh, out there by Tech 57. So if you want to hang out for a little bit until 12.15 hits, make sure you take the time to do that. We really hope to see you there and hope we get a chance to keep from the new school year ends. Who's ready to start the official school year next Tuesday? You see the worst thing? Too. Our orientation has historically always been on the Saturday, so you're welcome. We finally, we finally found a way to work our way into the arena on a Thursday. Uh, Loka, we are so excited to have you guys here on campus. Let's have a phenomenal year. Go get involved, get your pizza, and we hope to see you in Tech 57 at 1215.